All right, here we go with Chapter 5, Part 2 of Estimating Project Times and Costs. We'll talk here about the level of detail required by different stakeholders, uh, especially the, in this case the management uh, group. Um, with, with the management of the organization, the senior management is going to require a different level of detail than the, the uh, frontline manager. Senior management will typically want the high-level details of the project, nothing more. While no management uh, may want only milestone type of information. And then the first line manager will want more detail down to the work package or task level. The level of detail in the WBS varies with the complexity of the project. It's critical that the level of detail be balanced to meet the needs of management. Too much detail will result in departmental outcomes instead of deliverable outcomes. Uh, also, excessive amount of detail can create more paperwork and be tougher to manage. Too little detail can lead to lack of focus or wasted effort on non-essential skills. Now we'll talk about the, some of the different types of costs uh, in, within the project. So there's three major types. There's the direct cost, direct overhead cost, and then the general and administrative costs. Direct costs are the costs that are directly charged to the project. This includes labor to perform the work, materials for the project, equipment to use to perform the project work. Materials would include anything needed to perform the work. Uh, for example, if you were building a, a home, all concrete, lumber, nails, electrical supplies, etc., are direct project costs. Labor to do that work to install all of those items is a direct project cost. The equipment used to do the work, such as bulldozers for excavating, uh, forms for the concrete, uh, compressors for air tools and the tools themselves are all considered direct project costs. Now, direct project overhead costs are a little different. These are overhead costs that are such as salary for the project manager, temporary rental space for the project team, etc. This is generally a, a ratio or, or percentage of the uh, value of the resources used, like say 20% of the direct project costs. General and administrative costs, or GNA overhead costs, um, these are organizational costs that are not directly associated with the project, such as advertising, accounting, senior management, uh, that sort of thing. These represent uh, a percentage of the direct costs and, and plus the direct project overhead costs. Now here's a great example of, uh, of breaking uh, down these costs. So you've got your direct costs at $80,000, direct overhead, costs at $20,000. $20, then your, your general and administrative overhead costs are a percentage, a 20% of, of the direct cost and direct overhead costs. So uh, direct cost and overhead costs are $100,000. 20% of that would be $20,000. And then the profit is shown there, which is which is generally how contractors will, will write it. They'll write the contingency, the, the, the general and overhead, uh, general and administrative overhead, and then they'll put the profit in there so that everything is transparent to the to the customer. And in this case, the profit is 20%, um, which would be 20% of the $120,000, which is $24,000. So the total bid uh, ends up being $144,000. Now, as we discussed um in creating the WBS. The work packages are rolled up into the sub-deliverables, and then the sub-deliverables are rolled up into the major deliverables, and then uh, eventually up to the overall project goal. Now, the bottom-up estimating, the estimates are uh, for cost and duration are done at the work package level, and then they're rolled up to the deliverables uh, to come up with the total estimate for the entire project. The estimates aggregate up to the, develop the schedule budget. This is what the project manager will use to understand whether uh, the project is on track or not. There are 
different calculations that are done throughout the project to compare the actual cost to the budgeted cost to see if the project is on track. In many cases, the estimates can be wrong. This is due to interdependencies of tasks, changes in conditions, uh, changes in project scope, etc. There is a change control mechanism in projects that track changes in scope and risk mitigation processes that ch uh, to change baseline budgets. So as we uh, as we move forward, we, we then start to refine these estimates. Maybe a need to refine estimates several times during the project due to many different reasons. Uh, as you complete the WPS, you develop the network diagram uh, for the project. You'll find that uh, uh, you'll have some have to refine some of the <clears throat> estimate based on several different factors. The first factor is uh, uh, due to uh, interaction between tasks. In some cases, this could increase the estimate or even decrease the estimate, depending on what the interaction is. Uh, when the estimate is made, you are told to consider only normal conditions. In many projects, normal conditions do not apply. So uh, when these conditions are finally taken into consideration, there will usually be a need to adjust the estimates. There are things that can go wrong in, on a project that will certainly mean some adjustments to the original estimate. And then finally, changes in scope and plans. Projects are progressively elaborated over the life of the project, so there will be changes to the scope that come up. Any change to the scope must go through the change control board and be approved by them. This will be an approved change that will cause you to refine uh, the estimate. Now as we uh, finish our discussion on refining estimates, you know, as mentioned earlier, we, we don't want estimates at the work package level to be padded in any way. Uh, this practice can get out of control and the estimates can become very inaccurate. Because we know that things will come up in projects, it is common to add a contingency funds to and time buffers to the overall estimate. Generally, the contingency funds are added to the overall estimate, which is detailed in, some, in the estimate or the budget. Uh, the same is done for adding time buffers. This is generally done through the critical chain method. Doing this will help manage the cost overruns that can come up from some type of uncertainty in the project. Again, due to progressive elaboration of the project, costs and schedule baselines may be adjusted several times during the project life cycle. Finally, here are, uh, is a list of some of the key terms. Uh, you can certainly look these up in, in your uh, textbook.